Hey guys, Anthony DiClemente here with the Health Blueprints and a Grizzly Adams beard. I've got my stocking cap because today is the first really cold day that we've had here in Chicago. And I don't know if you can see, getting a close up of my organic apple here. I just made a run to Trader Joe's. I've got a pretty cool video for you today. It is a, a lot of people, I went to an event this weekend and I, I was having a conversation with Jason Frugia and a few other guys about how many of us have struggled with depression or low mood or anxiety. But because so many people feel like it's taboo and it's something that they're going through in isolation and that if they tell other people they're going to be judged or they're going to be seen as like something is wrong with them, um, they don't share it and they keep it inside and as a result they suffer alone and it's like they're going through this on an island. And depression is something that I have dealt with a lot of my life, uh, something that I've personally struggled with. It got really, really bad when I was going through Lyme disease. So I understand the struggles that um, that some of you may be going through when it comes to that stuff. And what I'm here to tell you is it's not your fault. Oftentimes there, there's a specific reason that we're experiencing these things and it, it can be pretty easy to fix, but you need to know what's wrong and you need to know how to fix it. So what I'm gonna do in today's video is well, I'm going to first tell you that if you're one of us that has struggled with depression in the past, you're not alone. And the more open and honest you are about it, the more people you'll find that have also dealt with this stuff themselves and have probably also felt uncomfortable discussing it and being open about it for the same reasons that, that you maybe haven't. Um, once I started becoming a little bit more expressive and and um, open about having gone through this stuff myself, more and more people felt comfortable saying, hey, you know, I've been through that too. Um, or, you know, what what's helped you? What can I do to, um, to move past this or at least keep the frequency, severity, and duration of these episodes to a minimum? Um, so I'm going to give you guys two hacks in today's video that are some of the, the most common causes that I see. There are many things that can contribute to low mood, anxiety, stress, depression, um, but there are two that I see more than any other. And if you were looking for a quick fix, let's say you, you weren't in a position to get involved in, in a coaching program with myself or someone that was able to help you work through this stuff and, and figure out, get to the root cause of what you had going on and you just kind of wanted to troubleshoot it. Um, that's that's what I'm gonna help you with today. So the first cause is um, it's methylation problems. And methylation is a biological process that happens millions of times in the body every second. And there are a certain segment of the population, roughly 35 to 50% of the population has a genetic variant um, known as MTHFR, which if, you, um, if you're one for tongue twisters, stands for methyl tetrahydrofolate. And what that means, science jargon aside, is that individuals with MTHFR genetic variation have a harder time metabolizing B vitamins and converting them to their bioactive forms. Furthermore, the synthetic forms of certain B vitamins like folic acid are actually toxic to these individuals. So you have like a, a, a two-pronged issue here where not only are these people um, often deficient in some of the critical B vitamins that they need to properly methylate, um, methylation plays a role in our ability to detoxify, our ability to produce feel-good neurotransmitters like serotonin, dopamine, all those chemicals that are associated with the reward center in our brain. And um, so if you're not methylating properly, you can have lower levels of these feel-good neurotransmitters. You can have, uh, you can deal with toxic overload. You can have low energy because um, your body is, is not as uh, effective at producing ATP, um, so you're you're dealing with suboptimal mitochondrial function. And if, if you're not familiar with mitochondria, they're these little organelles, these little organisms inside of our cells that um, produce energy. 
and they require some of these raw materials like B vitamins, like B2, B6, B12, folate. Um, so one of the easiest things to do is to figure out if you happen to have that genetic variation, if you happen to be a poor methylator. Now, the scientific way of doing this that costs a little bit more money is you just get a functional methylation profile test done. And um, there's a number of different laboratories that do this, but I believe one of them is like the Health Diagnostics and, and Research Laboratory. You just get their um, functional methylation profile and it will tell you if you're MTHFR and if you have um, this chemical predisposition. And then if you do, um, you, you know how to approach it with the right nutrients and, and dietary changes. What I do with most of my clients that is simpler and just as effective is we just supplement with the right types of B vitamins and nutraceuticals to facilitate methylation and then see if you feel better. And if you feel more energy and if you feel more mental clarity, if you feel higher, you know, elevated mood, then you're probably MTHFR. Or even if you're not, who cares? Because you feel better, right? So keep doing it. That's what we all want. It's just to feel good and to function at our optimal levels. So the best, uh, the best supplements in order to, to do that test, um, I recommend Thorn Methyl Guard Plus, and you would take three of those a day with food. You can get that on Amazon. It's pretty easy. Um, I would also get Doctor's Best SAMe. It's like capital S A M and then a lowercase e. 400 milligrams. I would take two of those in the morning on an empty stomach, and I would get um, the the best is a an intramuscular B12 injection. Uh, either in methylcobalamin or hydroxycobalamin form. Some people respond better to one form than the other. What you don't want, you don't want the cyanocobalamin form, which is synthetic and not as effective. And that's unfortunately the most common form for B12 injections. Um, but for people that aren't really into <laughs> injecting themselves with vitamins, uh, an easier, more mainstream approach is just a sublingual. So you can get like a Jaro uh, methyl B12, 1000 milligrams. You can do one of those lozenges under your tongue daily. What I recommend doing is try that for a month, see how you feel. Uh, then when that bottle runs out, get yourself a bottle of Per-K, P-E-R-Q-U-E, uh, B12 hydroxycobalamin sublinguals, which are 2000 milligrams. Do that for a bottle and see which one you noticed yourself responding better to and continue to use that one. So if you try those three nutrients that help to facilitate uh, methylation and you notice an improvement, then keep doing it. It may very well be indicative of the fact that you are MTHFR. The, um, the other cause that can result in low mood, depression, anxiety, heightened stress, and as I mentioned, there are a whole bunch of these and I really dig into them in more detail when I'm working one-on-one -on -one with my high-end clients, but I want to give you guys some, some value in this video and newsletter so that you can kind of uh, guinea pig these things on your own and uh, see if I can't get you some results in advance. And then if you want to do some other cool stuff with me, awesome. If not, awesome. It's all good. So the other cause is um, consuming toxins that in, in our food that we probably don't realize play a huge role in our mood and our ability to produce the, um, they, they, they cause inflammation in the body, they can interfere with our hormones and they can um, block the receptor sites for a lot of these neurotransmitters and feel good chemicals. And the two, well, three most common are grains and that includes Gluten, of course, everyone everyone knows gluten's bad. A lot of us don't even know what gluten is, but we know it's bad for us, so we avoid it. But what we see a lot is these gluten-free pseudo foods that still contain grains, and those are just as bad for many people. If you have a grain sensitivity, you're still going to be affected by gluten-free grain-based pseudo foods, like you know gluten-free pretzels, and the, you know some you see some of these brands out there. I don't want to name them and get a lawsuit thrown at me, but you guys get the idea. If it's if it's real food. Like an apple, <laughs> you can eat it. If it's a gluten-free pseudo food, you're probably best staying away, especially if you're dealing with one of these, um, one of these health conditions or symptoms that we're trying to solve here, uh, at least for 28 days. Uh, number two is dairy, commercial dairy. 
The only dairy that I recommend to some clients that tolerate it is raw, organic, grass-fed dairy. It doesn't meet all three of those criteria. So if you're buying it at a grocery store, it's not raw because technically it is illegal to sell raw dairy that has been pasteurized or homogenized. Now, getting into the details of that and the safety um, is a topic for another video, but what I will say is that the scientific research does show that even individuals with lactose intolerance can be cured of lactose intolerance by consuming raw organic grass-fed dairy. And if you want to find out more about how to get that, you can go to the website, raw, or I think it's realmilk.com and find, um, find an organization or a farmer near you that has it. The even better than raw organic grass-fed milk is raw organic uh, grass-fed kefir, which is a, um, a, a fermented superfood. So it's loaded with even higher levels of these beneficial probiotics and good bacteria and enzymes that we need to break down dairy. Um, so you're getting all of the, the nutritional benefits of dairy, but what happens when we pasteurize and homogenize dairy, which is all of the dairy in our commercial food system, that you buy at grocery stores, we're killing off these enzymes and these good bacteria that are vital, not just to our gut microbiome, but also to break down the dairy itself. So we're consuming an incomplete food. It is not, it's no longer a whole food because we've adultered it with these, these pasteurization and homogenization processes. Um, so number one type of category of food to avoid grains, including any, uh, any and all forms of gluten. Uh, number two is dairy and number three, kind of obvious, but alcohol. Alcohol is, um, not only highly immunogenic and allergenic, but it is also a depressant. So if you're suffering from depression, low energy, low mood, and then you consume alcohol on top of it, it's just going to get worse. So those are the two hacks that I would recommend starting with if you are one of us that has struggled with anxiety and depression, low mood, um, low energy, any of those things, and you're just trying to live a higher quality of life, um, address possible methylation problems or um, genetic variations pertaining to the MTHFR, which, and the easiest way to do that is to just get yourself some Thorn Methyl Guard Plus, take three caps a day with food, get yourself some uh, sublingual B12, Jaro uh, Methyl B12, uh, 1000 milligrams, take one of those a day, or Perique B12 sublinguals, hydroxycobalamin, 2000 milligrams, take one of those a day, see which one you respond better to, and then throw in a little bit of Doctor's, doctor's Best SAMe. Uh, you're going to want to take 800 milligrams a day on an empty stomach in the morning with a ton of water. Make sure you're staying hydrated, get your body moving. Many scientific studies show that exercise, especially cardiovascular exercise where you're getting a sweat in, you're getting your heart rate up into your target aerobic zone for 20 to 30 minutes is as effective, even more effective than antidepressants. Um, and so many people don't do that. We've had cardio demonized in a lot of the, um, a lot of the health literature, mostly because that's what people want to hear. They want to hear, Hey, Oh, I don't have to do cardio and I can eat all the bacon I want and I'm going to be more healthy. No, it's not true. Stop listening to that crap. They're trying to get you to buy something and you can eat some bacon if you're in a good health place and that bacon comes from pasture raised animals. It's organic. It comes from a high quality source and you're not overdoing it, but you still want to work in cardiovascular exercise in some way, shape or form. Now you, you also want strength training and and you want to work your glycolytic system with you know some high intensity intervals but ignoring cardiovascular training and the oxidative system is a huge mistake so many people make and it's a critical component to building a bigger engine and boosting those endorphins and those feel good chemicals and those neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine and you get that runner's high if you're trying to combat depression and you're not forcing yourself to get up and work out in the morning ideally outside with lots of skin exposed to direct sunlight you're doing yourself a huge disservice and then if you're not sleeping, you got to sleep guys, seven hours minimum. I know we're all busy, but if you're staying up and you're not getting seven hours of sleep, you're not even close to functioning at your best and you're, you're sacrificing quantity for quality and you're putting in time where you're, you're active, but you're not necessarily making progress.
If you really want to make progress, function on making each minute of your day as productive and as high quality as possible. And that's not going to happen without getting adequate sleep. And the floor for that is seven hours, ideally more. But Let's start there. So hopefully you found today's video helpful. If you guys want more help with this stuff, um, you go to healthblueprintcoaching.com and there's an application there. You got some videos from me. Uh, if you're not sick of videos from me by now and check those out, fill out the application. We'll set up a time for you to talk with someone on my team, see if the program is a fit for you and vice versa. Or if you want, you can shoot me a text message. Uh, my number is 847-989-3743. I'll say, hey, what's up? Did you fill out the application? You'll say, yep, filled it out. Just wanted to tell you how excited I am to possibly work with you. And then we'll go from there. So hopefully you guys had fun. I really appreciate your time and attention. Very cool of you. Um, and yeah, I look forward to talking with you guys more. For more information, go to healthblueprintcoaching.com. I'm Anthony DiClemente, and I'll talk to you soon.